obviously our daily video for today. And we will go um, through also the simulated FRQ number two from last week here in just a few minutes. But i uh, got a few things to share with you first. Uh, Wednesday's assignments today, watch the daily video, which we're, of course, on right now with the FRQ simulation two. Uh, number two, complete Schoology FRQ. <coughs> I'll be uh, loading that up in just uh, moments after this video is done. So uh, the Schoology FRQ will be ready to take. There are some additional options in AP Classroom. Those, some of you have asked me about those additional optional FRQs. Uh, if you want to do, again, another FRQ to get more practice in today, do one of those. Or if you've got some you haven't got done and want to do that. But make sure you do the Schoology FRQ first. Because, again, this gives us a simulation of exam day. And the one today is a 15-minute one. Um, so, uh, again, it'll kind of check that time a little bit. Uh, study and watch AP Live. I'll be linking that, as always, so you can get access there. And then our Zoom sessions today will be at 11.30 and 2. Uh, they're not. They're going to generally cover the same stuff. So you, it wouldn't necessarily be uh, important for you to be in both. But obviously, your questions also may determine a little bit of where those go. The, the plan for the Zoom sessions today are FRQ discussion and like skill approach when it comes to the type of questions <coughs> that we know are highly likely to be on the exam. And I'm going to basically take out the, the standards and we're going to talk through what questions they've told us, hey, just get ready because you're going to be asked to make sure you can view this from a spatial perspective. You're going to be asked to make sure you can look at this problem in the world geographically and at different scales. And so we're going to kind of practice the thinking skills <clears throat> that these FRQs are going to require. Also, I will have some additional information for you about the exam. Probably going to post that on a video tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to do that on the daily video tomorrow or a separate video but they released a bunch of information yesterday. It is really important that if you are not getting emails from the college board, <clears throat> everybody needs to check this, okay? Go ahead and check today and see if you are getting emails from the college board. I know how some of us check our emails. Some of us really good, some of us don't, okay? Check that. If you're not, there's actually some stuff we've got to do and or you need to do, and I'll tell you about that if you have that issue. But uh, as long as you're getting those emails, that tells you that they're going to send you the voucher that we've been talking about to get prepared for the exam. But tomorrow I may actually walk you through what they say the process is going to look like, <clears throat> kind of how it will work on exam day. Um, I also, I'm supposed to um, uh, possibly, well, I say I'm supposed to, I've signed up to attend a virtual, basically a webinar tonight <clears throat> about so, some social studies AP tests, including AP Human Geography. I may learn more <clears throat> in that as well, but I, I've looked over a lot of the information they've sent out so far, and I want to look at it a little closer before I share all that with you guys. Some of it you should already have, <clears throat> actually, uh, in email. So if you're not getting emails from College Board AP, then... Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> we've got to do some things. So you can either reach out to me or I'll probably give everybody instructions on that tomorrow. Okay. It is so important right now that we keep working. Uh, the double FRQ <clears throat> that you guys did for Monday, we'll be talking more about that later in the week. Some of you did it yesterday and that's fine. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm clearing my throat this morning. Um, but we will be talking more about that. I hope you treat it like the exam. And uh, the results are mixed, which that's okay. We got to learn what we need to get better at. Uh, we're going to be going over that second simulated FRQ. Uh, again, some of you, I do, uh, there was you know, a couple, three people that hadn't been very involved the last week or two that uh, have got a few things done the last couple days. So I appreciate those who've encouraged those. But still yet, I mean, we're looking at about 25 people who have did the double FRQ in all three classes combined. That's 25 out of 76. So you see my concern uh, that people are just going to show up on test day and think they're going to do well on the exam without these practices. And that that really concerns me. But um, <clears throat> we're going to look at right now the simulation number two. And I have so many things pulled up here. Here we go. All right. So this was the one from midweek last week to see how we did. And you had a map of Ukraine <coughs> by language. And it said areas of recent devolution at the top of the screen. Then you had a map of Sudan, and you notice that that was religion map. 
So you know it's about devolution, and then you get <clears throat> the number of states in the world has grown to approximately 200. The creation of new countries or states has been possible as a result of devolutionary forces, things that divide, centrifugal. Describe one way that each of the following factors often contribute to devolutionary pressures within a country. Guys, when it says describe, and we, we may, well, we're going to allude to this a lot more today, too, in, in Zoom. But that means, again, we got to go through a process. Like, in other words, embed an example of how culture can contribute to devolutionary pressure inside a country. Now, I want to show you a high-quality example <coughs> of what a good answer looks like. This was from one of your classmates on the, on the A part. One way that culture can contribute to the devolutionary pressures within a country is if people within the country do not feel a shared cultural identity between them. If one group of people is, say, Muslim and the other Hindu, it may be hard for them to coexist since their cultures are so different and extensive. This would most likely result in a split of whatever country they're living in. For example, when India split into India and Pakistan because the Muslims and Hindus couldn't get along. Uh, and actually, that last part is not totally historically accurate because the British are the ones that split the country. But the early, the, the other parts of this are, look at the depth. Look at the mention of you have two different cultural groups. There's even an example of two different religious groups. And it has a mention of because their beliefs are different, they will not necessarily agree on a lot of things, causing the lead to a uh, possible path to devolution. You're looking at three good sized sentences, but sentences with meat in them. OK, and I think that's about appropriate for this kind of question. So what some people did is say people have different cultures and that can cause a problem. That's not going to be enough on an open note test where they want to see what you can describe. <clears throat> so that answer is a, a high quality one. And that's what I'm looking for. And I was real picky on A, B and C. Really picky. Same thing on economics. What would be a common reason for economics to cause devolution? The best answer is if you have two different parts or more than two parts of the state that are very different economically in there, who's doing well, who's not doing well, and there's a gap of wealth and maybe throw religion and ethnicity differences on top of that. It would be great if you said all of that, because here's what I know. You say all of that, you'll get credit. You just say, well, economics can be a fracturing point when people are poor. I don't think you're going to get a point. <clears throat> it's not wrong, but if you're going to talk about, well, when there's poverty, people get desperate and, and they start to think people are out to get them, and therefore then they may rebel against their, you know, other people in the country who are doing better than them. <clears throat> so while your reasoning may not be wrong, it's description which means you need to walk through a process. I'm saying that economics can divide a country. Here's how I believe that would happen. You can't do that in a sentence. Can't do it. Again, what I'm teaching to here is how you can get that four and five. And it's my opinion that for most of you guys right now, if we can improve our description, our uh, discussion, our our explanations, that's the big thing standing in our way of I'm not sure how we're going to do to I can have a lot of confidence in how we're going to do. All right. Um, also, one other thing we'll be talking about is when we approach these FRQs. And again, I'm fine with you using the open note approach on these just like you're going to on uh, the test day. We'll also be talking some <clears throat> about how to set up your notes for uh, the test that's coming up. That's something that we're going to be talking about. Maybe even do a Zoom session. We'll talk more about that. Maybe do a Zoom session on that possibly tomorrow. But uh, then physical geography. Okay, so here, let me give you some examples of not such great answers that I saw. Physical geography can cause devolution in a country because some people live in different places than others. Not a good answer. That's not a description. That's a generic explanation. Physical geography causing devolution would be because some people might live in a mountainous area. Some people might live in between two large mountain ranges. Some people might live on, on uh, isolated islands. Because of that, their culture kind of goes a different direction. It diverges. Because of that, they believe in different things that will help their economy. Because of that, then they begin to divide. Centrifugal forces cause them to split away from each other, and they have different ideas about how the country should be run. That's a good answer. Okay. So, depth. 
depth of answers. D, identify and explain one political impact resulting from devolutionary pressures in Ukraine. So we're just talking Ukraine. Identify and explain. Identify just, that's not going to give me a point. I've got to explain. And an impact, a political impact. So in other words, explain a political impact that results from devolution and revolutionary pressures in Ukraine. I know there was war in Ukraine between Russian rebels and the Ukrainians. I know that Crimea broke away and is now part of Russia. So one political impact could be, so I would explain what was going on. I would explain how Russians lived in Ukraine, as you see on the map, how that they wanted to be, they wanted to leave Ukraine or have more autonomy in their country. A war broke out. That's actually a political impact. Tell who it's between, what it's about. <clears throat> Great if you tell when to. But that would be, or you could talk about a political impact being Crimea is now not part of the Ukraine anymore and basically is under Russian control as Russia has practiced basically irredentism, which is later mentioned, in the process. Using key terms and concepts as much as possible here. All right, moving on to E. Identify and explain one political impact resulting from devolutionary pressures in Sudan. So there's been war in Sudan. A new country was created in Sudan. Wait a minute. Explain a political impact resulting from devolutionary pressures. War, that's one option. Two, a new country in, in South Sudan. Both of those are political impacts. Now I have to explain, which means I have to explain how that happened and why that happened. Different tribes and religious groups fighting over how to rule Sudan and the attempted rebellion by the South and then the basically military attacks by the north, even genocide on the southern parts, or ethnic cleansing at least, on the southern parts and even western parts of Sudan. If you talk about the Muslim, Christian, and animist divide there, uh, you could talk about more, more importantly probably the more extremist Islamic views of the north. Uh, you could also, of course, if you're just talking about the war, really war or a new country, you're talking about the same kind of things to explain. Here's what happened. Here's why it happened and how it happened. That's explained, okay? F, describe how irredentism played a role in one of the countries shown above. This requires you to know the definition of irredentism, which on the test, you could look that up if you have time. Oh, yeah, irredentism means this. But remember, it's going to take a while to do that, possibly. Describe how irredentism played a role in one of the countries shown. So we know that irredentism played the biggest role above in Ukraine. So then we would explain many Russians lived in Ukraine. Your identism means nationalities under one state and the feeling they should be together. And so the Russians used that idea to try to bring part of Ukraine back into Russia and to have more of a political control over that area, claiming that that shouldn't be Ukraine anyway. And they were being discriminated against, they said, and, and all that. So that would be the best answer there. And then on G, it's Sudan. Explain how superimposed boundaries played a role in one of the countries shown above uh, Sedan's boundaries drawn by Europeans over 100 years ago, and therefore tribes and languages and religions were divided up, sliced up, which helped create the divisions that caused the war that we just described, hopefully in part uh, E. Okay. Hope that helps with that FRQ. Again, we're going to continue to review, especially these that I think are more test-like um, as we go through the days. Uh, I mentioned earlier information about the test. Let me throw this in right now. Uh, one thing I, I met, well, I messaged back and forth with some other AP teachers here yesterday. What is the best recommendations for notes? And this is something I would like to talk about some on our Zooms today. I've already told you, I think having maps on my you know desk where I can get to them, that that would be very good to have. Uh, but what else do I need to have? My our agreement among teachers is a condensed version of very organized notes, okay? A condensed version of very organized notes, uh, not flipping through a textbook's not a good idea in my opinion, um, but a condensed version of very organized notes where theories and models and major terms are easy to find, that might be okay. But one thing you may want to start working on is developing kind of a system of how you would do that. Uh, if you need me to look over that, uh, I do not care to do that. Um, the only thing is, I could I could produce something, but because of some of the software they're using to uh, detect cheating, that's really not, I don't think me producing something is, is the best bet. 
Now, already in our OneNote, you have, and you will be able, if you wanted to, use OneNote during the exam to reference. You couldn't really copy and paste from it, but you can reference. You can't copy and paste anything, obviously, but you can reference OneNote as resources from class if you needed to. Now, I'm not heavily encouraging that. What I would encourage is you take maybe some highlights from OneNote and maybe put on a more condensed document somewhere. If you have questions about that, I, I'm sure I would. Uh, we've got, of course, a, almost two weeks, almost, uh, to answer those questions, kind of help guide you. And if you come up with a plan and say, hey, will you look over my plan of what kind of notes I plan to have at my disposal, then uh, I will try to, to do that. Because, uh, again, I've got a little more information about the exam now. And uh, only thing that it, what is cheating is any in conversation with anybody else while you're taking the exam or anything that is plagiarized from any source, uh, whether it be online, whether it be just, you know, you're copying something somebody else wrote down. And they do have, and I will tell you, technology tools are very accurate at telling. If you put five words down in a phrase and you copied and pasted that, it is extremely easy for them to find that you've done that. So we don't even want to go in, in that direction. Okay. But we'll be talking much more about that. Hope the FRQ review has helped today. Again, the uh, FRQ in school today is a little shorter. It's um, also involving agriculture. So we'll see how we do on it. Some of us need a lot of work on agriculture. So don't be surprised. Excuse me. Don't be surprised in the next week or so if we don't do a lot of practice with agriculture and some review on agricultural topics. So if you know a lot of people are needing that, get ready. Uh, also, don't forget the videos uh, that I've been, even go back a week or two, some of those agricultural review videos that are extremely gr good when it comes to review. But thanks, you guys, for watching this. Uh, get to work on your FRQs. Keep working. Let me know if you have questions. Got some good questions yesterday. Uh, I've tried to answer those, I think, and uh, I've got a few FRQs still left to grade. And we'll be getting everything up and ready for you today in just a minute.